Susie Banner. Arriva ora da New York. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movies that have aged well. Um, Mr. 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 Arbogast, I wouldn't describe uh, it. I think I've. I think I've talked to you all I want to. For this list, we'll be looking at the films that have transcended their era thanks to well structured plots, iconic performances, and innovative filmmaking techniques. There will be some spoilers ahead, so a spoiler warning is in effect. Do you think these movies are timeless, or are they starting to show their age? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Psycho Alfred Hitchcock is one of the greatest directors in film history, and he crafted what could be the greatest horror movie ever made. Do you go out with friends? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. Even the fact that its iconic twists are well known does not distract from the movie's overall quality. The plot is superbly structured, and it remains innovative and unorthodox. Its exploration of human evil remains fascinating, and of course, the performances remain uniformly excellent across the board. Now, after the murder, Norman returned as if from a deep sleep, and like a dutiful son, covered up all traces of the crime he was convinced his mother had committed. Anthony Perkins gives one of the all-time best villain performances, and Norman Bates remains a tantalizing bad guy. Even the black and white photography fails to date the movie. Instead, it adds to the foreboding atmosphere. All told, Psycho is as mesmerizing today as it was in 1960, which is really saying something. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Number 9. Jaws While only in his late 20s, Steven Spielberg crafted the blockbuster to end all blockbusters. I'll catch this bird for you, but it ain't gonna be easy. It's bad fish. Not like going down the pond chasing bluegills or tommy cats. The concept of Jaws is beautifully simple. A hungry shark is terrorizing a popular tourist beach, and the local police chief hopes to stop it. The simplicity has allowed Jaws to remain universal. People still like beaches, and they're still scared of sharks. You yell shark? We've got a panic on our hands on the 4th of July. Spielberg's filmmaking has also transcended the generation, as he employs a less-is-more approach that suggests rather than shows. But even when it does come to the show, Spielberg pulls it off in magnificent fashion, with some mechanical sharks. Nobody does summer blockbusters quite like Spielberg, and he solidified the notion back in 1975. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Number 8. Halloween With just $300,000 and a cheap Captain Kirk mask, John Carpenter changed the very trajectory of movie history. You know, it's Halloween. I guess everyone's entitled to one good scare, huh? And if this movie didn't certify him as an all-timer, then The Thing certainly did. Like Jaws, Halloween has a very simple premise that remains both possible and horrifying to this day. A killer escapes from a mental institution and goes on a killing spree in the sleepy community of Haddonfield, Illinois. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. You can either ignore it or you can help me to stop it. Carpenter transcends his tiny budget and does a lot with little, like employing the then-revolutionary technique of the Panaglide, allowing him to shoot smooth shots from Michael's point of view. And yes, the silent Michael Myers is every bit as creepy today as he was in the late 70s. I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left, no reason. No uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death. Number seven, An American Werewolf in London. Yes, sir? A naked American man stole my balloon. What? Suffice to say, this is not what people were expecting from director John Landis after Animal House and The Blues Brothers. In fact, Landis had this idea long before he directed those two films, having written the script back in the late 60s. His passion for the project is clearly evident. It's both horrifying and hilarious, employing that famous Landis charm while also scaring the pants of viewers with some truly mesmerizing special effects. <laughs> And speaking 
of the Oscar winning effects, they still look extraordinary and extraordinarily disgusting today. Artist Rick Baker is an undeniable genius, and his record seven Oscar wins can attest to that. Go. Stay on the road. Keep clear to the moors. Thank you. Number six, Scream. The slasher genre owes a major debt to Scream. You making popcorn? Uh huh. I only eat popcorn at the movies. Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Oh, just some scary movie. The movie gave a much needed jolt to the dying genre thanks to a terrifically structured plot, an iconic villain, or two, and fresh tongue in cheek humour that satirised the genre with knowing winks to the audience. The movie's famous metatone still works well, even though it inspired dozens of copycats throughout the years. Oh, you want to play psycho killer? Can I be the helpless victim? Okay, let's see. No, please don't kill me, Mr. Ghostface. I want to be in the sequel. The cast is excellent. The famous twist of having two killers is still interesting, and best of all, that opening sequence still goes hard. Many movies have tried to do what Scream did, including in its many sequels, but none have quite captured that bottled magic. That's the beauty of it all. Simplicity. Besides, if it gets too complicated, you lose your target audience. Number 5. The Blair Witch Project the entire found footage genre was popularized thanks to the Blair Witch Project. You look a little blurry there. Let me zoom out on you. Okay. okay. Good morning. Got it. Okay, I got you. And like Scream, its countless imitators have been largely unable to reach its cultural shattering heights. Regardless of what you personally think of the Blair Witch Project, there's no denying A, its legacy, and B, how well it's aged. Simplicity is the key here. We never see the titular witch, so things like visual effects haven't had the chance to age. I'm scared to close my eyes. I'm scared to open them. Furthermore, the found footage gimmick remains effective. The footage could just as easily have come from a smartphone instead of a handheld camera, and it has allowed this little movie from 1999 to transcend the major technological leaps that have occurred since its release. We walked for 15 hours today. We ended up in the same place. There's no one here to help you. That's your motivation. Number four, Rosemary's Baby. While featuring satanic cults and the spawn of the devil, Rosemary's Baby is really about the experience of protagonist Rosemary Woodhouse. Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Satan is his father, and his name is Adrian. He shall overthrow the mighty and lay waste their temples. He shall redeem the despised and wreak vengeance in the name of the burned and the tortured. Hail Adrian! Hail Adrian! Hail Satan! The movie deals with many still precedent themes regarding women's liberation and personal freedoms. Rosemary is constantly gaslit and told what to do, and those around her don't have her best interest at heart. I don't know. Sometimes I think they're too friendly and helpful. Her agency is constantly stolen by those who want something from her, including her own husband. Of course, the movie also works extraordinarily well as a straightforward horror movie about creepy devil worship. Filled with fantastic performances and a palpable sense of paranoia and impending doom, Rosemary's Baby is a timeless classic of the genre. What have you done to it? What have you done to its eyes? Number 3. Alien This movie has the same premise as countless B-movies. An alien stalks the inhabitants of a spaceship and cuts them down one by one. Perfect organism. Its structural perfection is matched only by its hostility. But thanks to director Ridley Scott and his team of talented filmmakers, Alien far transcends its B-movie premise. The alien itself is a timeless creature, both in physical design and motive. It's a predator, and it wants to hunt and kill. That alone will forever remain scary to us.
The movie is also a masterpiece of visual design, featuring some spectacular sets, still convincing visual effects, and the nightmarish concoctions of artist H.R. Geiger. There is absolutely zero indication that this movie was made in the late 70s. Kane, Lambert, Parker, Brett, Ash, and Captain Dallas are dead. Number 2. Night of the Living Dead There's just something about little-known directors working on shoestring budgets that generates timeless masterpieces. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant! Night of the Living Dead not only started the whole zombie movie craze, but it also remains one of the scariest films in the genre's history. The on-screen violence is shockingly graphic and macabre, and we can only imagine the terror it inspired in 1968. At this hour, we repeat, these are the facts as we know them. There is an epidemic of mass murder being committed by a virtual army of unidentified assassins. And while Romero would later expand his post-apocalyptic vision, we love the smaller scale of this movie. It's both more personal and more realistic. Even after all these years and countless imitators, Night of the Living Dead has never been matched. Are they slow moving, Chief? Yeah, they're dead. They're all messed up. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Shining Stanley Kubrick is considered one of the greatest directors ever for a reason. But you are the caretaker. You've always been the caretaker. His seminal horror film is an undisputed classic, transcending not only years, but also the very haunted house subgenre to which it belongs. The film perfectly toes the line between surreal paranormal scares and grounded horror regarding the loss of sanity. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. Jack Nicholson sells his character's descent with remarkable skill, and Shelley Duvall plays off him tremendously. The movie's ambiguities also remain tantalizing, having generated decades' worth of interesting debate and discussion. The Shining can be viewed through an academic lens or simply as a straightforward haunted house thriller. Either way, it's a masterpiece, and it's remained as such for decades. Then I'll huff. And I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.